All right, my friend. Let's talk about object-oriented programming and classes in Swift. What is object-oriented programming? Let me share with you that in not technical term and very easy to understand because I know when you read blog posts and you go to courses, people will share with you any of those technical terms and you will know that. But the most important thing is you know how to use it. Now, for example, in a game, I'm building a game, the, how about, uh, what's that? Uh, what's that, Assassin Creed or something? The new movie coming out, right? Assassin Creed, there's a character going around killing a bunch of people. For example, that game, right? So we are building that game. Now you see that in that game, we're trying to model a certain kind of characters, a certain kind of objects in real life. Right? If you remember from lesson number one to lesson number four, last four lessons, we talk about things like variables, we talk about things like array, or we talk about things like uh, other data types in, in uh, Swift. But for a person, for example, uh, a car, a weapon, it is not simply that you have a variable that is called like a weapon and then you have a string or something, right? Because a person, think about a person, it has a hair, it has the skin color, it has the nose, it has the eyes, it has the mouth, it has the shirt, if he wears a shirt. <laughs> but it means that an object in real life is consists of so many other properties, consists of so many other variables if we use it. And an object and own cell performs a, a, a task, multiple tasks. For example, a car can rise, a plane can fly, uh, a rocket can launch, or a computer can send an email, for example, right? So that is the idea of object-oriented programming. We try to model real-life objects or we wrap around some objects that we can use it for more complicated tasks. That, in a nutshell, is object-oriented programming. I know it is very conceptual, so let's make it even more specific by doing in this demo and this code challenge. Let's go ahead into your Xcode, burst out your Xcode or your browser, and let's do that together. So for the last five sessions, we talk about variables, about array, about if else statement, about for loop, about function, right? And when we want to create, let's say, a number or um, a name of the author, name of the book, then we create those variables. But in programming, in your app, in your game, in your uh, in in your application things do, are not that simple. Because if you have, let's say, a recipe app that we're going to build in this course, iOS Development Kickstarter, we want to have a recipe. The recipe is not a single thing. A recipe contains things like the name of the recipe, the full description of the recipe, or people call it a method of the recipe, or things like the rating of the recipes, or the ingredients of the recipe. There are a lot of things in the recipe. So how can we group all of the things that we learn about functions, about variables, about arrays into one single object? That is a class. A class is a way for us to group together many properties and functionalities into an object, to model an object. So yeah, let's create a class. And the name of the class is recipe. And pay attention that this naming convention, the first character is always an uppercase. This is what we call the upper camel case. Okay. So in a variable, we have the first character is always a lowercase. But in the class, the first character is always an uppercase. And after that, we still use camel casing. Okay. Now inside here, let's say we want to have some property, some property for this recipe number one we a recipe must have a name so we have a string and we have to give it an initial value an empty string right because when we we don't know what is it yet remember that the class itself the class itself it is just a blueprint of the object 
a blueprint of the object. It's just a design of the object. So let's say in, um, let me show you some of the things here. I have my sketch here, okay? And let's say this thing. Okay, so now this is the design of a landing page that I have for my fox, right? This is the design of a landing page. Now this thing is just the design, the blueprint. And if I want to print this thing out, right? Imagine that we are in like um, um, a few decades ago. We don't have the internet. We don't have the things. In order to do this thing, we have to print those out, right? So this thing is a class. It has all of the features inside this, right? And in order to use this, we have to print those out into the papers, okay? So one point to make sure you are so clear about is the class is just the blueprint that described the properties and the functionalities of the object all right let's add uh, two more things number one the full description for the recipe is a string again i will use an empty string and let's say it has a rating is an integer and gives it a value of zero just starting out right now go back into that landing page the design is the class itself and in order to use that for people to use that class we have to create the print it's the same here we have the class recipe in order to create a recipe like um, let's say tiramisu right tiramisu a, a, a um, incredible <laughs> I love that thing and in order to have tiramisu, we have to, we must have an instance of a class. The instance, the word instance, it stands for uh, example or like a print from those design. Okay, so let's create an instance of a class. I will have a var tiramisu equals to recipe, the name of the class, open and close parentheses. All right, and then now we have to change the values of these properties. And you do tapping in tiramisu, tiramisu, like this, dot name, okay, we have dot notation. If we use dot name, then you have an empty string. Now I can change the value of dot name because it is just a variable. So here we have tiramisu, like this, Okay, and then you will see that if I use tiramisu.name again, then this thing should be tiramisu, not an empty string. So this is change. Now let's change the tiramisu.full tiramisu.full description equals to a string and let's say one egg, two spoons of flour and blah, 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 right? <laughs> I don't know. All right, so the full description, and then we have tiramisu dot rating is say five. Okay, that is how you create an instance for the class. Let's have another one. Var, let's say ice cream. Ice cream equals to a recipe for the ice cream, right? And let's say the name of the ice cream, ice cream dot name equals to like um, rum raisin. Um, ice cream right and then we change the description like ice cream dot full description equals to something like that and then we have ice cream dot rating equals to five okay or four or nine or ten whatever it is so that's very simple incredibly simple we have the recipe for the class and we change the values of the properties of the object of the class okay now pay attention we are not changing the values of the properties of the class we're changing the properties of the instance of the class so this is the class it's just a bunch of code it's just a bunch of code it's just the blueprint but if we create an instance we got to change its properties of the instance Okay, so that is two distinction. I hope that you enjoyed this. Do the code change now in the code change. Ask you to create very simple thing. Number one is a point. Number two is another class called Flappy Bird. Okay, and pay attention that this class, a class is the way 
another way to look that at this is a way for you to declare or to create your own typed. So we have the string is a typed, the description is on top of a typed, an integer is on top of a typed, the boolean or double is on top of a typed. The same for you for a recipe like this. Okay. So let's do that. Do the code change, and I'll see you in just a moment. We we'll do the code change together. Do it now. Okay, let's do the code change together. I hope that you do it. If you haven't, please do it. The reason, the only reason why I, I give you, I walk you through the code change together is because from the feedback that we got at Total Ice Blueprint and from the people that I talked to, they love to have me just walk you through these introduction challenges when you are learning coding. So that's the only reason. But don't use this the reason why I walk you through as the reason or excuse for you not to do it. Okay, that will be reverse. Uh, I, I don't know, it will not help you anything if you do not do the work here and just tapping in just watching the video will not work you any good. So now let's do the code change. We have a class called point and this class is so simple. It has a variable x is zero var y is another called zero just like this. And here's when things get interesting. We have another class called flappy bird. Okay. And this class flappy bird, it has a position and the position is a point the position is a point and yes you can have a var a position the type is a point equals to a point like this okay so remember the reason why the last thing i talked to you about this a class is a way for you to create your own type yeah that's why you can have an instance now what is this the var point, yeah, it is an instance of the point class. Why is this? Why is this? Okay, it is the class recipe. But why is this? It is the instance of the recipe class called ice cream. Makes sense, right? Okay, so now, next thing, we have a color, var color. Here I use a string, but and let's give it a yellow by default. Okay. Now here I use a string, but later on when we build the app, you see that we have an, another class called UI color. That that class is defined inside this thing here called UI kit. Okay. And that class allows us to use millions and millions of colors, millions and millions of color inside our iOS app. It is that crazy. Okay, so from now on, from now on, once we talk all about classes, about um, functions in class, about initializer of a class, after that, when we go into our app, it's just the matter of you learn new things about the framework, meaning that the code the Apple already wrote for us, and all we have to do is to use those class. Awesome, right? It's just like you play a puzzle. There's already those pieces. Now, in order to create a picture, you just have to connect those pieces together. Okay? So now, the flappy bird. Let's have another one called wearing hats. Does it wear hats or not? A Boolean value equals, by default, is false. Okay? Now, let's create an instance of the point class create an instance of the point class. Let um, origin equals, I'm sorry, let's just like a position, right? Equals, I will have let pass equals to a point like this, right? And then we have plus dot x is 10, plus dot y is like 20, something like that, right? And then let's have let flappy equals to flappy bird like this. And then we have flappy dot position. We assign the position to this guy equals pause like that. All right. So now if you have flappy dot position, you have a point and you click into this, you have X is 10, Y is 20, which is this guy right here. So now one question, why is that flappy dot position? Why this thing? Flappy dot position. 
yeah it is a property okay this thing is a property of the instance the property of the instance flappy which is the flappy is an instance of the flappy bird class okay so it's just have a few terms that we use a lot and you will get used to that trust me next let's use flappy dot color to be something like red flappy dot wearing hat to be true and that my friend is the code challenge but one last thing i want to show you is if you look at the flappy dot position right it is a point so now let's say i want to change the x coordinate of the flappy which is this position how can we change that to change a, and the x coordinate of a position of a point we just have to use pos here or the point dot x to be like 10 20 something like that right so how can we how can we change it the position the x position of the flappy well we just use flappy dot position dot x yeah we can chain those things like that equals something like 90. All right, so now if I use flappy.position.x, it is now 90. Here we go. That is the code challenge we have for the class session. I hope that you enjoyed this session as much as I do. Again, I see you in the next session. We talk about class initializer. The problem right now is we have all of these classes. Each class has a lot of properties, but what? the only way that we can create an instance is we create simply like this and then we change the properties like that but is there a way that now there's a lot of things involved here because it once we create the property like this it doesn't make any sense that the like the point is always zero zero or a recipe if we create an instance like that by default it is like doesn't have a name doesn't have a full description doesn't have a rating those kind of thing that's we'll talk about in the next session all right my friend that is object oriented programming and class in script i hope that you already finished the challenge the code challenge did you do it yeah if i were you and if you finish it or not do it twice do it twice because it will marinate the new skills, the new ideas into your brain so much better. When I first started to learn programming, I do so many core challenges so that these things I, I'm teaching right now, now it's just become automatic so that you can use these things really, really, really in the future. Very automatic, it becomes your foundation. It's incredible. So please do not skip this. Do not skip these core challenges because you know what? After training more than 1 million developers last year alone, I can tell you with guarantee, that more than 50% of people who goes to my more advanced course like Total IRS Blueprint or Socialize You Act and then they just skip around to the like the part that they want to build. For example, they want to build this social network app or this e-commerce store or this game and they jump into that more advanced things and then they start to ask me really, really simple questions like you are doing right now in this challenge. Huh. Now that's okay. I'm going to answer those questions no matter what because every question is a good question for learning. But as a developer, you are required to take the time to build the foundation knowledge, to build the foundation skills. Because imagine if you go to a team of developers you, uh, or you apply for a job and they ask you these simple questions and if you don't be able to, to answer those questions. Will you get a job? Will you get the work? Will you be able to do the work done? Well, I hope that you will take the time. I know that it is five days already and you are still here. It means that you are going to very much likely complete this challenge. I honor you for that. I congratulate you for that because not so many, not so many people do that. And you are among the very few who is really special doing this. So I'm honored that you are here. So congratulations. I see you tomorrow here, right here, still here on this webpage. Day number six, we talk about even more advanced concept in class and school. Until then, I see you tomorrow. Go out there every single day of your life. Learn new things. 
craft your ideas and contribute to the God. I see you here tomorrow.